This is your daily reminder that back pain is not caused by body weight and your spine is fully capable of adjusting to weight fluctuation. And if it's but like how drastic of a fluctuation are we talking about, man? I think it's pretty ignorant to assume that if you gained a drastic amount of weight, that you're going to be all right by the end of that weight gain. That'd be like somebody like, you know, like I Ronnie Coleman, like Ronnie Coleman is a professional Mr. Olympia, right? He won eight Mr. Olympias, the most Mr. Olympias tied with. I believe, um, who was that black guy from the 80s, dude? Nobody ever talks about him, even though he should be recognized. Whatever, I forgot his name. Um, he is arguably one of the best bodybuilders of all time, but he, like, destroyed his back doing extreme workouts, like, deadlifting, like, crazy amounts of weight and, you know, bench pressing, like, literal 200-pound dumbbells all the time. And his back paid the price, slipped a couple discs, now he's... He has an inability to walk, and he struggles to do basic things, and it's real tough to watch, right? He lifted heavy-ass weights, okay? Now, I know for a fact, when I talk to women that have very, very big breasticles, they constantly tell me about the back pain that they have because their, their bust is so incredibly massive. So... With my deductive abilities, right? It's not really deductive abilities. It's just like common sense. I'm I'm putting two and two together and going, wait a minute. It just, I think it's probably pretty convenient to say that when you have extra weight on your body on the upper half, you're probably going to feel that in the lower back. You know what I'm talking about? It's like obvious. Like it's the same thing when you're very, very fat. They say don't work out in, in like do more aerobic type workouts. So like, you know, water exercise, maybe the, use the elliptical because the amount of force that you're pushing down on the earth, on your ankles and the lower body is like multiplied by like thousands of pounds because you have so much extra force pushing down on you. And like the ankles are such little small portions of your body. And the same thing could be said for your spine. Your spine is not supposed to handle, <laughs> you know, four, five, six, 700 pounds daily, daily. Not, not even like, can you imagine doing it for just like a workout, you know, you're just, you're just deadlifting maybe a couple hundred pounds at a time for maybe like one workout a week. Can you imagine doing that every single day, <laughs> year in, year out? Dude, yeah, of course it's going to do some damage. It's not. It's because you have an... You know, you know fully... also, I want to go back to, because like, I thought it was hilarious to say like, this is your daily reminder. Why do I need a daily reminder? What are you talking about? Like, I have a fucking notification on my phone every single day that comes up. Like, yep, daily reminder, weight gain does not cause back pains. Why do I need that every day? <laughs> Why do I need that reassurance? This is your daily reminder that back pain is not caused by body weight and your spine is fully capable of adjusting to weight fluctuation. That's it just, it's just a crazy, it's so, such a crazy statement, dude. Because it's like, it just completely ignores <laughs> every type of like any any type of idea of structural integrity if it's not it's because you have an underlying issue that you need to get checked out that's just crazy to say it's just so crazy to say like it's not the problem of weight you got to be really brainwashed in a major degree to sit there and go no 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 even though we have studies <laughs> and we have all this proof that we can that we can see that yes when you weigh a lot more you will have pains in those areas now nah, don't look at that you actually, you have another issue. It's obviously not the one that, like, do these people not know what averages are? I often wonder. It's like the difference when somebody tries to argue with like, hey, I don't wear a seatbelt because on the off chance, if I do wear a seatbelt, I would rather, when I get into a car accident, fly out of the window and there's a chance that I might survive that than wear a seatbelt and I get stuck in the car. And when I'm stuck in the car, I can't remove myself from the car. What are averages? Do we know what averages are? Like, what are the chances of you getting into a car accident and then having that seatbelt save your life, then that seatbelt not saving your life? You know what I'm talking about? Like, it's such a stupid thing to say. Like, there might be a chance, sure, that you're driving and then flying out the fucking window is probably safer, maybe. Like, <laughs> I'm sure that that's probably happened to somebody. I'm sure. But the averages, if you look at the averages, it's probably a lot safer to buckle up, right? You know what I'm talking about? That's probably, and the same thing could be said here. If you look at the averages, I would see that when you weigh more, you're going to have back pain. You're going to have ankle pain. You're going to have more pains. And you can you can most definitely say it's not because of the weight. It's because of something else. But that's dumb. That's stupid because you're ignoring the averages, the biggest number here, okay? But go off, queen. I listen to my doctor. And that's fucking crazy, dude. 
all right, your doctor said that. You know, I, I, I don't like when people say I listen to my doctor, therefore I know what I'm talking about. I listen to a lot of people, and that doesn't always mean that those people know what they're talking about. And granted, it's a doctor, of course. Not all doctors are created equal. I'm not saying I know more than a fucking doctor, obviously, especially. Well, I might know more than a doctor, depending on the area, of course. Of course. I probably know a little bit more when it comes to Star Wars and Yu-Gi-Oh!, but he probably knows more than me on medical shit. But the point I'm making is, I don't know what you mean by you listen to your doctor because you are obese. And if your doctor is telling you that the back pain that you have is not primarily caused based off of the weight that you have on your body, maybe it's not. But like you can't tell me it's not majorly it's affecting because you. because you have an underlying issue that you need to get checked out. I listened to my doctor and I lost weight for back pain and it's one of the worst decisions I've ever made in my life because it made me lose the protective layer of fat around the injury, which accelerated- How much fat do you need around the injury, dude? What the fuck are you talking about? Did you needed that much fat? Are you still obese? What you talking about? How much weight did you lose? Damn, dude, you must have been big as hell. What kind, of, what kind of argument is that? Yeah, I listened to my doctor and I lost the weight and it was actually worse. It was like way worse because I had the protective layer of fat around my... First of all, I don't even know if that's, that's how spines work. It's like the cords themselves being protected by layers and layers and layers of fucking fat because you gained a ton of weight. I don't think that's how that fucking works. It's like, that's like somebody going like, I gained a ton of weight and my arms elongated because the weight, the fat in between the joint increased. And then therefore I had longer long arms. No, that's not how that fucking works, dude. Does that work for anything by the way? Can I get like inches on my dick? If I just gain tons and tons of weight, because I've only ever heard fat dudes complain that they can't see their dicks anymore because they have like that layer. You know, when you have a big meat, right? There's like a layer around the dick. You know what I'm talking about? Where it's like this, but when you gain weight, it kind of goes like that. You know what I'm talking about? Because the weight is accentuated upwards and it looks like you have less dick and all factual and all reality, you do. But uh, if you're telling me that if I gain weight and I gain a lot of fat, my meat's going to be increased. Tell me, let me know. I need to know. My life. Because it made me lose the protective layer of fat around the injury, which accelerated the problem to the point that I lost the feeling in my leg Damn. and had to have back surgery. All for a problem that was- But I bet you couldn't have that back surgery if you didn't lose that weight. I, I bet that was the reason in general for her to be losing that weight to begin with, was that because most of the time these people never, <laughs> they never want to talk about this. But like when you're very, very, very fat, the, the ability for you to go get surgeries is significantly reduced because like the simple thing of like anesthesia can kill you. Like it's just, that is right there. That right there, the, the bigger you are, the more fat you carry in your body, the harder it is for you to wake up out of anesthesia. So that right there, boom. And then also you got to add into the fact of it is very difficult for somebody to perform surgery on you when you have layers and layers and layers and layers of fat that somebody has to cut through to get to wherever they need to go. So that's going to be difficult. Now pile that onto the, the anesthesia and then also the recovery times because your body's constantly being taxed. So it's not going to be able to heal an appropriate rate. It's just not a very good thing. You understand? So if you were losing weight to get the surgery and that was the end goal and then you had to get surgery regardless, I don't know. I hear this constantly where these people say, I have back pains and I can't get surgeries. Dude, how many times do I got to say that you guys have back pains and you think that nowhere that it's not because it's, it's not, it's never because of the weight is in no way connected with my weight. How do you know that? Where did you get that information from? Are this like your head cannon? Are you thinking about that? Didn't the doctor literally tell you to lose weight to reduce the back pain? Are you really questioning this guy right now? Oh. And had to have back surgery. All for a problem that was in no way connected with my weight. And if your doctor says that it's because of your weight and denies you testing on that basis, make sure that that is in your chart and you get a copy before you leave. What do you think you're gonna like slap the doctor up with logic? Like, yeah, he fucking said that the weight gain. Dude, the, what you're arguing right now is literally arguing non-fact. Like you're seeing realistic information and you're going, this obviously cannot be true. Where did you learn that the weight was not affecting your back negatively? I would love to know that because like I've talked to and I've met, and this is anecdotal of course, but I know this for a fact, this happens to most fat people. When you become bigger, you're gonna have problems with your back. You're gonna have problems in general. Most people in general are gonna have problems with their back at some point in their life. All you're doing is accelerating that, right? All you're doing is just amplifying the, the stress that you're causing on your back. But go off queen, dude, it's obviously not your fault. So here's the thing. Fat people are not the supporting cast in the little movie that is your life. What the fuck is going on, dude? Would you staple these glitter things up on the wall? What is this? What are you, what are you doing? Oh, damn. She painted her fucking eyebrows, dude. She got that rosé. Is that a lighter? Man, what is up with people's aesthetics nowadays? Why are you wearing a shirt? 
a button up, but I can see right through it. What is the point? What is this, like, tea bags? Like, the, the, the material looks like tea bags, right? Like, very, very thin. Whatever, dude. Let's hear what she has to say about fat people, man. Are not the supporting cast in the little movie that is your life. We're not your mommy. <laughs> what is that? What is this? <laughs> is that, like, trying to be sensual or something like that? Like, we are not your mommy. Dude, calm down, dude. What the fuck are you doing right now? I'm not getting bricked up over this, okay? I don't know why you're... Maybe maybe she has people. Maybe she has simps or something like that where guys are beating off to this. I Maybe this is like... Is this not supposed to be sexual? I feel like I'm getting a little bit of sexualness from it. In the little movie that is your life. We're not your mommy. <laughs> We're not your therapist either. I don't even understand. Is this like a thing that happens to bigger women where... Bigger women are used for their therapy sessions and their momminess. Is that what I'm hearing? I, <laughs> I've not, I've not heard that. I've heard that guys have used women for those particular types of things because most guys have no way to express themselves emotionally. So when they get somebody that they can't express to emotionally, they'll trauma dump on that woman, right? They'll use a like I hear a lot of times, men and women. Women looking for men that are daddies and men looking for women that are mothers. And I don't know where that comes from, dude. Personally, I never thought it was a good idea. Like, in my opinion, if you're going for somebody that you want to be in a relationship with, it should be more so like a partnership in the sense of like you should be looking for somebody that is capable of having conversations, somebody that is capable of communication with you on at least a 50-50 aspect ratio. Like, you should be having somebody that can actually do these things instead of somebody that's just going to sit home and cook food for you. And then when you get home, the house is it's like, is that all you want from somebody? What else is there? Like, is that all there is, huh? She's 22, she's hot, and I have sex with her sometimes. Like, that it? That's all you want? I've heard that. I've heard that. Um, somebody that's just going to sit there, you play video games for nine hours, and she cooks and cleans for you, and then she sucks you off every once in a while, <laughs> and then she comes in with the pizza rolls. That's what guys want. I mean, not all guys, but you know what I'm talking about. I've heard a lot of guys say that. And the same thing for women. Oh, I just want a guy that can buy me MKs and Bombshell from Victoria's Secret. And I want him to, you know, cater to me. I want him to buy my sheen carts and this and that. And I want him to, you know, take me out and this and that. I don't know. It's just like, what are we doing nowadays, right? Like, oh, this guy has to have the final decision on everything that I do, even though I'm an expert in this particular aspect in life. Bro, get the fuck over it, dude. What the fuck are you talking about? We're not your little wingman at the bar you can abandon as soon as you find some dick. Damn. We're not your That's very specific. What the fuck? We're not your little wingman that she's talking about somebody, dude. She just shaded somebody OD You're there. You're the wingman at the bar you can abandon as soon as you find some how much, dick. How much time did it take to put this makeup on, man? Is this like super aesthetically pleasing? Like, I What I really love is that I believe this makeup is formatted in a way to make her sh her shape of her face look thin but isn't that in direct uh in direct um opposite to what these people stand for which is like praise your fatness i don't know i think it's an interesting case study we're not your stylists we're not going to go to the mall with you and only visit stores that carry clothes in your size i feel like this is very specific dude i feel like she thinks that i think she's projecting od right now to try to make it seem like she doesn't live a suck suck dick ass life because I, i've never heard ever in my life that fat women are just going to be wingmen's for women and they're going to the mall with you i guess <laughs> and they're like i don't amp you up what are we talking about right now dude uh this sounds like your problem and it seems like you're just trying to project it upon other fat women to make it seem like your shit is not as bad and we're like obviously obviously i'm not the only one that's going through this becky and all them are going through it too right you're going through it right you have to be going through it otherwise i would be living a very very depressing and suck booty ass life where my friends don't care about me and they constantly use me for emotional support therapy sessions and penis penis consumptions like what did what are you talking about man this is obviously not something that's happening in a wide spectrum all of you and only visit stores that carry clothes in your size and we're happy i feel like that one is very that one, like what am i supposed to do first of all if i'm hitting you up i'm like girl girl let's go shopping and you go oh i know you want to go shopping but i can't go to like anywhere because no, like, if I go shopping with you, it's just really going to be you going shopping. Because none of the clothing stores at the mall carry my sizes. I don't want to be your friend. I don't know what to tell you. We can't do shit that in. Like, what are we doing? You, you already, when you come over my house, all the food's gone. All the chairs cannot, you can't sit in any of them because you'll break them. And you constantly complain about that shit. And now we can't even buy clothes together. 
I just don't like, what are we supposed to do then? Cause it's like a 50, it's like what it is, is a hundred percent or a hundred percent. It's either we do it my way or we do it your way. I either get clothes or I don't get clothes. And then you get clothes or I don't get clothes because like, you're not going to be able to shop at like Macy's or some shit like that. And I'm not going to be able to shop at like Sephora or like, what is that fucking Torrid? I'm not going to be able to shop at Torrid or whatever the fuck. And they even complain about Torrid nowadays. They say it's not fat enough. So there's no win-win there. I'm not going to tour. That shit's depressing, bro. What am I going to do? Walk in and see a whole bunch of fat women like sloshing around on the floor like slugs? That's depressing, man. I don't want to do that. Why do I, you know what I'm talking about? It's just like, it's, un, it's unreasonable what these people have. To have you in our little movies. But if you want to be in them, here's what you're going to do. This is some real main character syndrome, man. I, I don't know why so many people nowadays, I've talked to people that literally say that like, I am the main character. I am that girl. I am her, sis, slay, I am, period, she is, she is me and I am her, and I'm just like, who thinks like this, why would you ever, like, go ahead, enjoy your life, you should be the main character of your own story, why are you vocalizing it like that, you're trying to make it seem like I don't have my own story, like, you're trying to make it seem like you're fucking superior to me, I don't know why so many people feel like that nowadays, but people nowadays are super self-obsessed with themselves, and it's way too obvious <laughs> it's, and it's become too cringy and these people are just putting it on display as if it's not cringy and that's an issue that's a fucking issue dude you guys are way too full of yourself in our little movies like go ahead and celebrate yourself but this shit is fucking cringe but if you want to be in them here's what you're gonna do Educate yourself on fat politics and fat liberation. Nobody's doing that shit, dude. That's fucking crazy. I don't want to be your friend. If you're telling me a prerequisite to be your friend is to fuck, is to educate myself on bullshit, dude, where have I ever had to do that anywhere in my fucking life? Like, can you imagine having a friend and going, hey, dude, before we go, before we're friends, I need you to read like nine books on this particular thing. Otherwise, we can't be friends. What are you talking about? Why is your life revolved around being fat so incredibly drastically that I have to educate myself on fat politics? What even is that, dude? What What is fat politics, first of all? That is a crazy-ass statement. And then fat liberation, too. You guys are literally holding yourself back. You're, you're, the, the, the definition of fat liberation literally doesn't even make sense in the context of the way your bodies are shaped. But I guess I gotta liberate myself. I don't know what the fuck that means actively ask us about our dumb little crushes and love interests when you ask us to dude this is i feel like this woman is projecting so fucking hard dude ask me uh, ask us about our small little crushes are you upset that your friends don't do that and this is like your not even a subtle way of doing it you're putting out a video under the guise of fat people need to be represented and then also saying things that are very very specific so that way when your friends do see this video they'll go huh i wonder if Jessica means this for me, because I don't ask her about her fucking love interest, I just presume she has none since she's making cringy TikToks and the most of the time, this shit is so cringy that I, I just presume that nobody would want to be with her. By the way, I think this is like some kind of like vagina ring, right? Doesn't this kind of look like a vagina? Vaginas are weirdly shaped. This could be a vagina ring. Don't come at me. Dinner, choose around us about our dumb little crushes and love interests. When you ask us to dinner, choose a restaurant with accessible seating. I'm not... Provide. I'm not doing this. That's crazy, dude. It's just so insane to sit there and go, oh, man, I, I, why do I have to do this? Dude? I, this is such an unreasonable request. Like if you're going out with friends and you're telling me, hey, I know we're about to go out to like five, five guys or something like that or some other place. I don't know where people go out to eat nowadays. I haven't been out to eat in a long time. And you go, make sure they don't have booths and make sure the seats are actually durable enough to withstand. I have to give you, but you don't want to tell me how much you weigh because that would be like, I don't know, like that would be damaging to you, like triggering for me to know how much you fucking weigh. So I can't know how much you weigh. I just kind of have to guess. Like I just have to go and call up like, hey, listen, man, do you got seats that are big as fuck? Because my friend is big, real big matter of fact. Could <laughs> you make sure these seats are big as fuck? Here's what you got to do. Get like five grown men, double it and stack that on a seat that's my friend put that right there big men too make sure they're big men it's just unreasonable i don't want to have to like have these restrictions anytime i'm gonna i'm gonna go hey do you want to hang out with me no i don't want to hang out with you because you have unreasonable requests sarah jessica J whatever dude okay it's not sustainable for me to have to call up every fucking establishment we go to to make sure why don't you do it why don't you fucking do it can you give me a list 
of places that you can't go, that would be so much fucking easier, matter of fact. But you know what? I just eliminate you from my friend group. You are too ridiculous in the same sense in the same sense of like you shouldn't have friends that you should be able to like hold back from you know what i'm talking about like obviously your friends are gonna have stop points and like restrictions and things like that but if you're sitting there and you're telling me that i need to cater to you a hundred percent and i need to ensure that i don't say something to you that might offend you and not only do i need to do that but the chairs need to be sustainable for you the fucking environment needs to be accommodating for you like it's just unre it's just ridiculous this is all ridiculous. I'm surprised you have any friends at all. I mean, obviously, you probably have very limited friends because all these restrictions are like probably hyper, hyper weaving out so many people. Actively ask us about our dumb little crushes and love interests. When you ask us to dinner, choose a restaurant with accessible seating. Provide accessible seating in your own home. You're fat as fuck. That's crazy as shit. You're big as fuck if you're saying that shit. I can't come over tonight because I might break your furniture. What the fuck are you doing? Hey, before we come over and play Fortnite for four hours, is your sofa going to hold me up? Because I'm big as fuck. You're big as fuck, bro. Advocate for your fat friends whenever you can. And remember, friendship is reciprocal. What do you mean advocate for my fat friends? What does that even mean? Like, I, I'm never having a conversation where my friends even come up and people are being mean. Like, what am I even gonna, what, what what scenario is something like this even gonna come up? What the fuck, what, what environments do you live in where you're having conversations like this? Like, I, I talk about my friends, okay? I'm friends with a lot of black guys, okay? And a Middle Eastern dude. Never once have I said, I remember I was talking to a girl and she thought I was, like, really white. And I remember, dude, she was really probing me. She was like, oh, you probably listen. For some reason, a lot of girls think I listen to country music. I don't know why the fuck so many women think I think I listen to country music. I don't. I don't fucking. Maybe, like, Johnny Cash from, like, the 1960s, 70s, maybe. But, like, that's it. And I remember she was like, oh, you probably listen to, like, Morgan Wallace or something like that. And I was like, uh, no, nah, I don't even know who that is. What is that? And she was like, oh, but, like, your friends have never talked to you about that? And I was like, uh, no, what the fuck? My friends listen to, like... I don't chief Keef and shit. Like, what are you saying? Chief Keef? What are you talking about? Chief Keef? And I was like, yeah. And like, do you have white friends? And I'm like, um, nah, no white friends. Actually. I have no friends that are white at all. All my friends are either ethnically ambiguous or black guys. And then she was like, are you playing with me, dude? You're playing with me. Obviously you're playing with me, right? This, that's, that's impossible. You're white. And I'm just thinking like, what are you talking about right now? You're black. What's your fucking point? I know. Do you have white friends? Like what kind of conversation point is this? But I never in my life had ever told somebody that I have black guy friends and they go, black guy friends are disgusting, gross, and horrible. I hate black guy friends. Cocoa butter smells disgusting. And I hate that they're well lotioned. BBCs are terrible. I've never heard that. Never heard it. And in the same breath, I've never heard somebody go, hey, I've never even heard a conversation where it even comes up if you have fat friends. It's such a weird line. I don't even know how you would even get to that dialogue tree to get to... I have fat friends. That has to be something you just have to blurt out, right? Like you're on the first date and just go, hey, I tell you about how I have these big ass friends, fat guys, all big guys, massive men, big bellies. That's such a weird way of bringing it up. I just like, and then like, again, how do you even get there, right? You have to just randomly say it. So you're saying that you have big guy friends or fat girl friends and that person goes, ew, that's gross. That's nasty. Mm, I hate fat girls and fat guys. Disgusting. In that case, obviously go, wait, wait a minute now. I have fat guy friends. My fat guy friends are cool guys, regardless of how many hot pockets they eat. Okay? They're cool guys. It's never going to come up. It's never going to come up. And again, this sounds too specific for it to actually be a thing. It sounds like the, your friends suck ass. It, that's what it sounds like. Advocate for your fat friends whenever you can and remember friendship is reciprocal. If promoting obesity is what it takes to make other fat people feel hot, obviously I'm gonna do that. So yes, I am promoting obesity. Stay mad. So fucking beautiful, dude. This is a beautiful individual, bro. I like the art. The art's nice, dude. I hope, is this her art? Wow, wow, wow. Super talented, super talented individual, dude. Look at this art. Look how great it is, man. I like this one right here. These two right here. These two look nice. But yep, keep promoting obesity and throw out your oriental fucking whatever that was, a fan, dude. People don't use fans anymore, dude. I just, I really want to see people do that nowadays. They just whip out a fucking fan out of nowhere, but have it in their fucking sleeve. Like their Ezio's Auditori from Assassin's Creed. Just whip it out. Just fucking, yeah, check me out. Just nobody does that shit anymore, dude. Uh, sad. So yes. Damn, that belt, man. Damn. I am promoting. It's not even... 
you're wearing a belt, but it doesn't even look like this this particular outfit has a strap line. You know what I'm talking about? You know when you're wearing jeans and you get have a thing that you go weave a belt through? You're just putting this on this. What is this? Is this shorts? Where'd you get these shorts? This looks like you just skinned a sheep. City. Oh, Stay oh, my bad. Hold up, bro. She got the napkins on the bed, dude. Damn, man. You see that right there? I wonder, I wonder what that means, dude. Where the lotion at, dude? Hold up. I'm seeing some phallus-shaped objects. I'm not inferring anything. I'm just saying. Obviously, you're going to see some napkins behind me, too. But I don't use napkins. I do beat my meat, obviously. But I'm not fucking... I uh, blow my nose before I go to bed. And I... Because, like, I I like to have clean airways when I sleep. And I'm, on, I'm not a mouth breather, but I do wake up with my mouth open sometimes, which is concerning to me. But I love breathing through my nose and uh i like to make sure that my nose is clear when i go to sleep so but yeah sometimes it is because of the other thing no. yes i am promoting obesity stay mad thank you so much i used to really like those old things i used to buy those when i was a kid i remember i used to there used to be the chinese dollar store downtown that you can go into and I used to buy really fake ass Yu-Gi-Oh cards when I was a kid because nobody could afford real Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Like it was really hard to convince my mom, like, hey, could you spend $25 on this pack of Yu-Gi-Oh cards that I'm most definitely going to destroy inside of 20, probably inside of a week because I'm going to literally probably take these in the bathtub with me. It wasn't a good idea. But I went to this, growth, this, this Chinese dollar store, right? And they had turtles in the front. I think I might have told the story before, but they had turtles in the front and I took a whole bunch of turtles home. We had bought them because they were cheaper than the Yu-Gi-Oh cards, bro. Can you believe it? I'm buying a whole person for less than a pack of fucking cardboard. And I took them home, two of them, and we had a fish tank, dude. It was great. We would feed them fish food or whatever the fucking turtle food they were. But I remember literally within a few days, I realized that one of the turtles had some type of domestic violence happen to him or something like that. The other turtle was fucking him up. And I remember looking at this turtle and I remember I was like, what the fuck? Hold up. Why does that turtle look weird? Compared to that turtle, and I looked real close, and this other turtle didn't have eyes. No no eyes at all. It was just flat. And um, I, I realized that this dude was blind as fuck. He was just born without eyes. And I didn't realize that. They sold me a malfunction turtle. But I guess it was my own fault. I mean, I wasn't really looking. There were turtles. What You know what I'm talking about? It's whatever. And I tried my hardest to ensure this dude would eat because I realized he couldn't see the food. He was blind, obviously. And... Um, so I would fucking take the, I would take the fish food or whatever, and I'd make sure I put it next to him. Like, you eat that shit, bro. Eat that shit. And I felt really bad for this turtle. And then one day, bro, I woke up, and the other turtle was fucking him up, like really just slapping the shit out of him, biting on his foot. And the other turtle couldn't do shit. This dude is handicapped, right? And I was like, bro, what are you doing? And I remember one day that he he was dead. That dude was fucking bitching him up all day. And I sold the other turtle um, for not that much money. But I did sell him. It was real sad what happened to him, dude. He did get, he did die. RIP to that turtle. I have realized that I have a problem. And my problem is I make every song that I sing gay. And I don't know why I have that problem. But I was singing that one song. That song goes like, reaching for something in the distance. So close you can almost taste it. And every time I sing it, it's always gay. It's always, it's always like, Reaching for something in the distance So close you can almost taste it Release your inhibition I was sucking on some dick Put that shit inside my lip Please, I want to suck up on it To put it in Put it in my mouth, I need that big dick When that shit was swallowing it I couldn't get enough of that big dick Inside my mouth, please I love sucking dick, please You know, it's, I don't know, I just, every time Every time, any song Really, any song, it just turns gay. Anyway, let's con let's continue. Here are three benefits of being fat. If you only three, that's it. I thought there would have been way more. If you're tired of only hearing why it's so awful to be fat, then listen up. Hey, I'm Vinny, aka Fierce Fatty, and I help people unlearn anti-fat bias so they can live without shame and be a fat ally. Understanding that there are benefits to being fat is going to chip away at that anti-fat bias. But you're only giving me three, and if they're anything like, they have to be some really big benefits. To, I mean, I can name a few right now. If these are all going to have to be preferences, I mean, preferenced with some type of context behind it so like if you were trapped in like 
an Eskimo like igloo or something like that, and there was no food that you can eat, that's great. You know, being really, really fat, and that way you can rely on your fat storages, and you could probably just live for a little bit of time based off not eating, that's probably really good. Or um, maybe if you were in a universe where being fat was cool, you know, like maybe in these scenarios, I can't really think of much, but I'm interested in hearing hers. We all have in our brains. And by the way, there are many benefits to being fat. We're going to start with just three. Number one, you get to be in community with fat people. It's a fat community. That is a terrible one. It's not even a good one. That is a terrible, terrible thing. You don't have, because you're fat, doesn't mean you have to be a part of fat community. That's what? That's like somebody going, benefits of being black. You can be around black people. But I'm already around black people as a white people. You, know, I don't, you don't need to be a black guy to be around black people, right? Am I wrong on that? All right, next one, please. Not only is being in community with fat people virtually or in person filled with so much joy and fun and laughter. Why and though? Are, is there something intrinsic about fat people that would make them, uh, what did she say? Joyful, fun, and laughing? Why? What are you guys laughing about? Oh my God, I just spilled SpaghettiOs all over my fucking lap again. <laughs> Is that what you're doing? <laughs> what? Why is it joyful? I would think that it would be depressing. I hear these fat people talk all the fucking time. And they might be having... I remember I was listening to like a fat podcast. And it was with Jordan Underwood. And Jordan Underwood said something that was so incredibly depressing. And I was thinking about it. And they were laughing about it. They are like, oh my god, it's so funny. And I was thinking like, that is morbid. That is, that is hilariously terrible. It was Jordan Underwood. And she said that she had to buy a necklace extender. Because her neck was so big at that point. That... It was infeasible for her to actually wear a necklace anymore. So she was complaining that she had to pay for this thing called fat tax, which is hilarious, by the way. I couldn't find the clip. I tried to look for it, but it was on like a podcast. And the podcast is like three hours fucking long, dude. And <laughs> I'm not like watching the entire thing again. I did watch the entire thing, but it was it was like, a I don't know, two, three weeks ago. So I roughly remember this, but I remember her saying this. But um. She was complaining about that. She was saying, like, it was fat tax, and we're already in a capitalistic society, and now they're forcing me to buy more stuff to accommodate for things that they want me to buy. And I'm just saying, like, what the fuck are you talking about? First of all, you're big as fuck. Being as big as you are is a product of capitalism. Like, you wouldn't be that size because of that. But she was complaining that she had to buy a necklace extender because her neck was so fat, and that... <laughs> I don't know, bro. It's just... It, to me, that just screams... A terrible life you have to buy a necklace extender that's like somebody saying like i need to buy a belt belt extender it's fat goodness but also it protects our mental health and what about your physical health shouldn't we be talking about the physical health though helps us stop internalizing anti-fat beliefs number two we are i think it's also really incorrect because you're talking about fat communities that are a tr that are specifically a, that, that are trying to attract fat activists because fat people in general are not just going to inherently agree with you because you're fat incredible and resilient if you're a fat person i disagree i do not think fat people are incredibly resilient i think it's the other way around these people are like the most snowflaked people on the fucking planet they can take zero criticism and when they do they have mental breakdowns and if they're not having mental breakdowns they're replying to every single comment with another video trying to explain to them why they're wrong and if they're not doing that and they're probably crying in their fucking bedrooms about what just what, what they said about them. And we're talking about the physical resilience, which is also not true. You guys are literally falling on the floor and it's over. Like, you, you cannot get up off your own free will. So in any aspect of that, you're not resilient. And then it's highly likely that you've experienced shame, bullying, exclusion. Yeah, but I don't think that's like being fat. I'm sure you get some type of... You, obviously, you're going to get some type of trauma from that, obviously. But being on the internet for any extent period of time, you're going to get trauma. It is what it is, right? And I think it's a good thing in the sense of like you should have thick skin. You should have that buildup of tolerance that allows you to take on that abuse and to just have it slide off you. But oftentimes, these people just don't have that, bro. The amount of times I've talked or seen these people have comments be lodged at them that you would think that it would just be nothing for them because I get so many of them. Nah, bro. They'll just record themselves crying because you said something bad to them when it really won't even be that bad. It'll be like somebody going like, hey, you're fat. And then that'll be it and they'll just start crying. Or they'll make like a, a five or ten minute response video to how somebody said it's not good to be fat. And they'll go into the deep in, the deep details on why it is okay to be fat, but actually have no supporting evidence of that fact. So I think that's wrong. Being judged left, right, and center all because of your body. And guess what? You survived. And to me, that is incredible. And so you've had to unfortunately learn to be resilient.
Number three. I think it's a good thing to be resilient. What do you mean it's unfortunate to be resilient? It might be unfortunate in the sense of like to have to that be the the reason why you're resilient, but it's a good thing to be resilient. Three fat people are easy to find in a crowd. <laughs> Unless you're in a fat crowd, dude. It might be a little bit difficult there. It's like trying to find where's Waldo in a fucking where's Waldo. Like all the other people around him are just where's Waldo's. So I disagree with that one. Lost your friend at a concert. If they're fat, they're going to be way easier to spot in a sea of straight size bodies. That is so disrespectful, though. <laughs> just, it's, it's such a... You couldn't even come up with good things of, to justify why you're fat. Finding your friend in a fucking concert? What are you talking about? What? This is so niche, dude. What are you saying, dude? You couldn't come up with a reason of like, oh, not go to the doctor that much. Oh, be really good at getting yourself off of the floor. There's plenty of things that you could have went, but instead you went for the finding your friend in a concert. What are you, why would you ever, bro? I, dude, yeah, it's going to be easier to find your friend. Hashtag good reasons to be fat. That's definitely the reasons. Yes. Be, if you'd like the be, be fat. So that way when you're lost, at least you're easy to be found. Okay, yeah. What about the other stuff though? Like, what if you fall down? What if you're taking a hike, which is I I I probably advertise against if you're really fat. What if you're in a hike and you fall down, and then like the bears and the antelopes come and eat you? It's over. You get like that's not a good thing, right? That's another reason why you shouldn't be fat. Like you see how niche these circumstances are. Why would you go to a concert of all things? So like. Whatever, Full bro. list of all the benefits. You can go check out my podcast. Terrible, terrible benefits. The Fierce Fatty Podcast, episode 128. I gotta watch these fucking podcasts, bro. You know what? I'm gonna do live streams soon, and I gotta we gotta watch some of these fucking podcasts, dude. Like that's good. It's gonna be so great. I've already have some ideas of some podcasts we're gonna watch, dude. Oh, it's gonna be awesome, dude. Just Google the Fierce Fatty Podcast, episode 128. Save this video to reference later. Remember, you're worthy. You always were. You always will be. And stay fierce, fatty. Treat obesity. First off, it's a disease. We have to recognize it's a disease. Stop pathologizing body size. <laughs> Stop calling obesity a disease. Somebody told me that this guy's actually, um, or a girl. I don't know, man. It's so difficult sometimes to see. I don't know. Like, here's the thing, right? It's fine. I respect pronouns and shit like that. Like, if you want to fucking call yourself a woman or whatever, dude, go ahead, right? No problem for me. Uh, I, I I do have an issue when people start calling themselves, like, Febreze bottles and things like that. I think it takes away from the entire point of having transgenderisms. But, you know, what the fuck ever, right? I'll respect it. I don't know. I, I've never heard this person ever talk about their pronouns before. And I thoroughly do not know if this person is going from man to woman or woman to man. And it is very ambiguous, bro. I'm not even trying to be mean. If you looked at this person and went, what is that? Like, what are you trying to do, right? Am I wrong? This could be a dude or it could be a girl. I don't fucking know. I am so lost, man. Anyway. Your size. Stop calling obesity a disease. Body size is not a disease. Dude, if you're fucking 450, it's going to be an issue, okay? I don't know what else to tell you than that. If you think it's not, that's okay, but you're wrong. There's no other way to say it than that. Just like being abnormally taller than average. Dude, it's just crazy to anybody that ever tries to compare weight to height because in one scenario, you cannot change it. It's not possible well, unless you're going to like Russia and having your legs broken or whatever. But even those people, like you have like 10 inches extra on your fucking your legs and you're walking around with these short ass arms. You're like an arc survival character. It's not, it's not a good looking thing. Height is not something you can change. That is determined by genetics. You being big as fuck, 450, is not something that you can compare that to, given the fact that you literally put that poundage on yourself. It's not a disease. I had to stop blow drying my hair because, seriously, this part. Just take a moment to read it. Which sounds like more of a cult. Helping people find, helping people find there's more to life than body size, or... Making every moment about making every moment about the superiority of medical starving starving to change your body size. What, dude? First of all, nobody's starving themselves when you're on it. When you're on a deficit, all you're doing is reducing calories, okay? And you're probably in a surplus reg regardless of that if you're already starting from a very obese standpoint because you're still eating too much most of the time. I never recommend for people to go into a deficit from eating like 4,000 calories a day down to 1,500 calories a day. That is drastic and too much. I would always recommend if you're eating at 4,000, lower to like 3,500. You're still in a surplus, but you're going to still lose weight at that level. It's not starving yourself if you're still eating. These people have never, these people have never seen the 
ever in their entire lives. They've never seen the effects of starvation ever. They've never experienced them. They've never seen them. They know not what starvation is. They count people. They, they literally count not eating for two, three hours as starvation. It's not what it is. And eating less is also not starvation. Your body can literally go two, three, four days without eating and not be in starvation. So you're fucking crazy if you think it's starvation because you're eating one less burger a day. You're crazy. <laughs> literally what sounds more like a cult a bunch of people who are like wow we have been convinced that the biggest war we should be having is with ourselves and that our bodies are not good enough for us to get general access to health care general access to clothing general access to sitting comfortably on airplanes booths etc you guys sound like a cult you guys literally looked at the world and said even though this is comfortable for the majority of people in this world Fuck them. We don't fucking care about them. We want us to be accommodated. We don't want other people to be accommodated. We want us to be accommodated. Fuck those people that are trying to better themselves. Fuck those people that are starving themselves, even though they're obviously not starving themselves. They're just eating what they should be eating. Crazy, right? Can you imagine eating what you should be eating and starving yourself? All right, whatever. And they're drinking water. They're exercising. Fuck those people. They're trying to make the they're trying to make themselves more accompanied for the world rather than just making the world more accompanied to them. <sighs> no, fuck them. In your scenario, you are you want the world to change for you. You want people and everyone else and the society at large to change for you, which is never going to happen. It's never going to happen. I hate to say it. Never going to fucking happen. At least in the other scenario, you're making yourself healthier and you're changing to fit better into the world, which is an easier piece to fit into. What you're doing right now is like, you remember those old like toys things that you put like a triangle in the triangle hole, right? You would do that. What you're doing is like you're trying to smash a circle into the fucking triangle hole, trying to make it fit. And it's not going to fit. It's not how that fucking works. You guys literally want too much. And they're saying that that sounds like a cult yes. okay so then the other the reverse right is when fats fat people lose weight or start an intentional weight loss journey then they fully are consumed with fat phobic rhetoric of what is fat phobic rhetoric being healthy what, like calorie deficits lifting weights uh, well this idea that to be thin is the best way to live life it is for the most people being fat is a literal detriment on your life it depends on what you're it depends on what you're counting as a good way to live life if you don't count being healthy as a good way to live life that's fine if that's what you want to do nobody else counts it like that though if that's what you want to do it's completely fine it's like somebody saying like I'm like, oh, yeah, you're homophobic. And they go, you're, what are you talking about? How am I homophobic? I'm not afraid of gay people. Nobody uses it like that. And if you go there and you try to say, I'm home, I'm not. I'm not homophobic because I'm not scared of gay people. That's dumb. And you knew the way I was referring to it as. I hate when people try to like reverse or like uno reverse you or say something that you obviously knew what the fuck I was talking about. Keep it a buck, bro. Stop doing that shit. It comes off really disingenuous. It is, if that's the way you want to look at it, if you don't want to consider being in a good size healthy and you're considering other things as healthy like i don't even know like having washing your body consistently sure i guess you can count that as healthy but like nobody is gonna look at that while you're 400 500 pounds and go that's healthy you understand it's not it's not possible and that being thin resolves all health issues it's never a it's never going to resolve all health issues i don't know why these people have to stretch it so far to make it seem like we're saying something unrealistic here. Nobody, I'm going to say it again, nobody is saying that if you are 400 pounds and you go down to your body size as you should be, which I don't know, let's just say hypothetically, it's 160. So you went from 400 to 160. It's not going to alleviate every single problem you've ever had ever in your entire life for the rest of your life. Nobody's fucking saying that. It is such an unrealistic standard to say that. Nobody is saying that. What we're saying is that if you are 400 pounds and you go down to 160, you're going to alleviate a lot of the problems. You're going to have, find it easier to navigate the world. You're going to be able to lift yourself off the floor. You're going to be able to walk more. You're going to be able to find more clothes. You're going to be able to do more in society. And you're going to feel better in the realm of healthiness. You're not going to have to deal with most of those problems. That's what we're saying. Are you still going to have issues health-wise? Sure, you might. You might still have issues. And depending on how long you were fat for, those issues might still be there. But at least you're cutting the losses at least it's like gambling when you're 200 dollars into the hole that's a hell of a lot better to back out then than your eight million dollars in the fucking hole you understand there's a difference you understand dude you're you're probably still good when you're 160 you're probably still gonna have to deal with that 200 dollar loss but at least it's only 200 as opposed to the eight million dollars that you fucking lost that you're gonna continuously lose while you're fat you understand that's what we're fucking saying i 
This, I despise. I despise when people have to do this shit. It revol all health issues is such a terrible, disingenuous way of saying, I think I'm superior or like there's no reason to lose weight because it's not going to resolve all issues. Nobody thinks like that at all. When you buy a new car, are you looking for this car to improve in every single fucking way possible? No, you're looking for a car that's going to improve in the ways that you want it to improve, and you're going to take the things that are not going to improve very optimally. You're going to have to sacrifice with everything you do in life. Nothing is going to be fucking perfect. I don't know why you would think this would apply to being thin. It's such a terrible, disgusting way of thinking about anything. That's like somebody going, you should never try to make more money because you're never going to make all the money. Are you fucking stupid, dude? You're making like $10,000 a year and you're fucking broke? You think that it's not a good idea to make more money than that because you're not going to make all the money? No, obviously fucking not. That's dumb. It's stupid. Don't believe this fucking terrible bullshit. Oh my God, bro. And that, you know, we should all be striving to lose weight. And Unless you're already thin. If you're thin, you're fine. But if you're very, very overweight or obese... You're not, it's, you should, but if you don't want to, it's fine. That's a great thing about living in America and most westernized countries is that if you want to be fat, you can, it's fine, but just at least acknowledge that there's going to be problems instead of like sitting there and uh, what's the word I'm looking for here, dude, gaslighting people into believing that there's no benefit to losing weight because you're not losing, because you're not losing all of the negative effects of being fat. And the idea of consistently controlling every single thing you put in your mouth. Nobody's saying every single thing. Man, these be all end all words to try to make it seem like we're saying something ridiculous. You can have a pizza every once in a while. You can have a burger every once in a while. You can eat like shit every once in a while. You can totally do that. But at least be consistent enough where those things are not going to completely destroy you. That's what we're saying. And every single thing your body does. And then weighing yourself every day, tracking your weight every day. It's just like you're going so far. To make it seem like I'm sure these people exist that are weighing themselves every day, that are eating great foods every single fucking day. They're consistent. They're doing all this. They're mid-maxing like crazy. They're taking vitamins. They're doing all this, getting blood pressure, getting all this stuff. I'm sure these people exist, but they're not the majority. They're not the majority. You're talking about the 1% of the one fucking percent. We're talking about people that are trying to lose weight. And most people are doing that passively through the realm of I'm going to lose weight through a calorie deficit. You are talking about somebody that is the 1% of the 1%. It's not realistic to compare that shit because what you're doing is you're comparing somebody who's passively gaining weight. Most people that gain weight are not fucking shoveling food in their mouth with the intention of gaining weight. Most people get there passively. They see the weight gain, but they don't really look at it as something that's a problem. And eventually it becomes a problem. You understand? Because you consistently do it in the same way, like... And the same way that when you're losing weight, you're looking at the you're looking at the problem and you're going, I'm gonna lose weight through calorie deficit. I'm gonna go to the gym and I'm gonna do this, right? Most people are doing it like that. Nobody's like most people are not looking into the micro macro nutrients of things. They're not weighing themselves every fucking day. They're not going to the doctor's office to get blood work to ensure that their fucking their blood pressure is correct, their cholesterol, shit like that. No, most people are not doing that or like monitoring everything, weighing out fucking food. Most people are not doing that. And to compare something that is going on passively to somebody that is literally 100%ing something is very fucking disingenuous, dude. It is dumb. It is ignorant. It is stupid. It's, it's a terrible way of justifying an argument. It makes zero fucking sense. And you're being very, very gaslighting right now to try to make it seem like your point is valid. It's dumb. It's dumb, dude. And the fact that you tried to go that far to make it, to make your point valid, it just kind of shows me to the extent to which you have to justify your claims. You have to go to a very extreme, you have to go to a very extreme person. And I do mean person. It's not many people that are doing that to justify being fat. It is crazy. That, that sounds like, that, that sounds like kind of bad for your Yeah, you know what's crazy though? You're, you're, dude, I hate it. I hate it so fucking much, bro. Talk to me. Fucking talk to me, dude. Fierce fat femme. Fucking talk to me, dude. Let's have a conversation. You would not get away with saying this fucking bullshit if we had a conversation. That is insane for me to sit there and make a claim as bullshit as you fucking did and then think you ate right after that. To sit there and go, oh, it, it kind of sounds like that's really unhealthy. Yeah, you know what, man? You know what's fucking crazy? Most people are not doing that. And, and the fact that you thought you ate after saying some straight up bullshit conversation like you just did is insane to me. How can you... I don't know, like, I'm just, like, concerned about your health. Mm. Cycling or gaining mm. and losing the same weight repeatedly through restrictive dieting is really dangerous, and that's because...
bodies have a set amount of nutrients and vitamins that we need in a day. And there's a lot of them that we can't store in our bodies, so we have to get them from the food that we eat. So you're eating too much and you think, first of all, dude, yes, your body's your body does need nutrition. I agree with that. I'm not going to disagree with that, obviously. But what do you mean your body is not going to be able to store nutrition? What the fuck are you talking about? Like you take a vitamin Z pill and you think that like eight days later it's still going to be there? What the fuck are you talking about? It's like the pill from that one movie. Um, you know the one I'm talking about, dude? Where there was like germs or whatever and one of them was being played by Will Smith or something like that. Or Chris Rock. I don't know. One of the black guys. I don't know, dude. Don't come at me, bro. You know what I'm talking about. Like there was a time period where black guys played as a lot of animated characters. I don't know what it was. It was like the early 2000s. Whatever. The point I'm making is you obviously have to maintain certain things. Some people don't. Some people just kind of go passively through their life and don't even know what a fucking multivitamin is. But... Eating too much, by the way, is just because you're eating too much, you do realize your body is still malnutritioned in the sense of like you're doing too much for your body. Oftentimes, you guys are not even getting proper nutrition. Like most of the things you're eating are literally carbs and trans fats. So let's be honest for a second. And if you don't meet those requirements, your body will take them from the only place where it is stored, which is your muscle. And the fat? Like, bro, what are you fucking talking about? Sure, when you lose weight, I think this is a... This is something interesting to talk about. When you lose weight, it is very important to understand that you will lose you will lose muscle. This is a fact. This is why I always say go slow and steady and really hyper-emphasize protein when you lose weight because you want to reduce the amount of muscle that you're going to lose as much as you possibly can because you're going to lose that muscle. Your body's not going to discriminate. It's going to go for the fat 100%, but it will also go for the muscle when you lose weight. There's no, there's no getting past that. So when you're losing weight, it's super ridiculously important to eat Many, many, much uh, proteins to to minimize that, and to sit there and tell people that you shouldn't lose weight because if you do, you will lose weight in the muscle is retarded, is dumb, it is stupid. Because sure you will, but if you're sitting at like let's say for instance your body compi- comprises of 100% hypothetically, your body comprises of 100% and the muscle is say for instance 10%, but the fat is 90%. You have to understand that, sure, you'll lose maybe, like, I don't know, 0.5% of the muscle every week. But you're going to lose way more of the fat because based off of averages, you have more to lose of the fat than you do the muscle. You understand? I don't know why I have to explain it like this to these people, man. And because our hearts are muscles, it will take from there, too. Yeah, but. Bro, you're not talking about heart right now. You're not you're not talking about the heart right now, dude. You guys are literally perpetually living off of chocolate milk in your fucking veins. You guys have literally thick bricks running through your blood every single fucking day with the amount of cholesterol inducing fucking you guys literally probably drink canola oil and you're sitting here trying to tell me that me losing weight is going to hurt my fucking heart in comparison to you guys literally stacking on hundreds of pounds unnecessarily and that's not doing anything to your where do you get off talking about that shit dude then when you regain the weight because all diets have a 95 percent failure rate that is such a bullshit thing man i found this that 95 percent thing is a is not a it's not a real fucking study dude it was a fucking it was was, what is it dude they just asked like i think like 200 300 fucking people or something like that it's just bullshit 95 percent of diets failing even if that was true that just kind of motivated that should motivate you even more that you could be a part of the five percent or you can mo- or you can increase it to six percent i don't care by the way oh man you put more strain on- it's like even if that was true even if that was true that 95 percent of the diets fail so you just think that people just just shouldn't try okay a weakened heart it might not be much short term it's not really that big of a deal but the issue comes in where people cycle through that If you do that over and over and over, you create what's called a perfect storm for a cardiac event. Dude, get the fuck off me. Get the fuck off me, dude. Get the get get off me, dude. You're not you're not talking to me right now about this shit. You of all people really can say that, huh? What about the weight? Is that not doing anything to the cardiac event that you're talking about? No, no, it's the the weight. It's the weight loss. That's what it is, guys. When you get a heart attack. It's not because you were 450. It's because you tried to lose that five pounds that one week. That's the reason. It could, not the weight, not the weight, not the weight. Definitely not the weight. And it increases your risk for things like cancer, diabetes, stroke, and metabolism issues. Healthy choices are important, but diet. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, damn. That's crazy. How you saying all that? Really? You go 
don't really attribute all that to weight loss and not talk about the weight gain? Oh, shit. Ooh, damn, that shit's kind of stinky, bro. That's gross. Whoa. That's fucking gross, dude. What the hell are you talking about right now? I'm gonna need to take a sip of water after that shit. That's insane, dude. You really out here telling people to not lose weight because it might increase your chances of illnesses while they're already at an increased chance of illnesses because of the weight gain. It's are not a healthy choice. Metabolism issues. Healthy choices are important, but diets are not a healthy choice. Oh, oh, it's gross. It's so nasty. Oh, it's so gross, man. Oh, oh, damn. That's just tough. Damn. Damn, dude. That's fucking, that is gross, man. I can't even believe somebody can say those words without just like spazzing out. That's crazy, dude. Oh. Ooh, that's nasty. Metabolism issues. Healthy choices are important, but diets are not a healthy choice. Ooh. Not hot. Ooh, shit, Me I can't do that. Nah, we're gonna have to end the video there. That's that's too much. That's way too much. I can't even take Jordan, bro. We can't do that. That's, 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 the amount of craziness I just heard from that woman is actually insane. I can't believe I just heard all that shit. I think that even though I think the, the school system is incredibly fail, like it's failing a lot of people, I don't even think the school system is responsible for that. That's some purposeful fucking ignorance right there. I don't even know how you even get to that. Wow. That is insane, dude. All right, man. Uh, We're going to end the video here, bro, because that shit is insane. I can't. What do you want from me, bro? Did you not hear what the fuck she just said? Did you not hear what the fuck she just said? I want you to hear what she just said again okay because we got to intake that it might not be much short term it's not really that big of a deal but the issue comes in where people cycle through that if you do that over and over and over you create what's called a perfect storm for a cardiac event and it increases your risk for things like cancer diabetes stroke and metabolism issues uh, healthy choices are important but diets are not a healthy choice oh uh, oh oh Oh, it's gross. Ooh, shit. It's gross. It's gross. Nasty. Nasty. Nasty, bro. Nasty. I'm not even going to comment on that. There's nothing I can say about it. It's just gross. It's nasty. Disgusting. Horrible. Just terrible information, man. Who the fuck do you think you are saying that? Ugh. You're nasty, dude. Unless you're God himself coming down to bestow upon us the new rules of the universe. Get the fuck out of here. That's gross, man. Woo. Damn. We're going the video here. We're going to end it here. If you enjoyed today's video, um, leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video. If you watch the video in its entirety, let me know down below by typing in beefaroni. Because I have a beefaroni can right here. And uh, it's got Chef Boyardee on it. Another man with a mustache, dude. I don't know what, I don't know the lore on Chef Boyardee, but it's got no preservatives, no artificial flavors, no colors, no... Oh, they said no. Oh, they're just like recycling the same shit over and over again across the can. All right, I guess, dude, whatever. Beefaroni. You ate it. I ate it when you were kids. I haven't eaten it in probably five years, probably five years, dude. And I think that one time I did eat it is because I didn't want to cook something and it took me a little bit of time. I don't know, man. I, I just really feel kind of really disgusted right now. That shit was gross, man. That shit's nasty. These people are fucking gross, dude. Anyway, guys, I want to remind everybody here that you're beautiful. You're an amazing person. I love the way you suck liquids through a straw and the perfect placements of your lips upon those straws to ensure that you're getting the proper intake of liquid sustenance to, to make sure you're properly hydrated. Drinking water is super important. Don't listen to these people. If you're losing weight, that's fucking great. I mean, it's obviously fucking great. Don't fucking listen to these people like you're doing irreversible damage to yourself. It's worse on the other end. So you're doing a great job. You're fantastic. I love those before and afters. I love when you talk, when you send me those pictures of how you used to look compared to what you look like now. You look good. You look really good. That jawline is literally, you can probably cut glass with that jawline you got right now. And those abs, you can grind meat on the abs, dude. That's what it looks like, man. Absolutely. You look really good. I would drink your bath water twice because I know how delicious you are. Anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you want to check out my social medias, it'll be linked down below. Discord is there. Um, Instagram, Twitter is all there. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Peace.